True or false? Bananas grow on trees. True. True or false? Chameleons change their color to match their environments. True. True or false? The Great Wall of China can be seen from space. True. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. Even though many believe these things to be true, experts have pointed out that these are simple misconceptions. Have you heard the saying, if you're told something enough times, you're sure to start believing it? The same can be said for a person, company, or organization. For example, when the John Birch Society is mentioned, some respond in a negative way. If you ask why they feel that way, most can't explain. So why is this? In order to really understand, we need to go all the way back to when the society began. A man named Robert Welch founded the John Birch Society in 1958. He believed the only way America could maintain its sovereignty and freedom was by promoting less government and more responsibility. He also believed that this would require exposing the socialists, communists, and other collectivists who always work for more government and less responsibility. In a speech given in 1961, Mr. Welch emphasized the importance of restoring the U.S. Constitution and avoiding democracy. His slogan was, this is a republic, not a democracy. Let's keep it that way. He truly believed that with God's help, these principles would help create a better world. His ideas quickly gained support and members. And with this growing momentum, the society began to attract national attention. Of course, not all of that attention was positive. In 1961, the Communist Party's West Coast newspaper, People's World, put out an article entitled, Enter, from Stage Right, the John Birch Society. Naturally, the Communists portrayed the anti-Communist John Birch Society as a dangerous organization created by the absolute boss, Welch, who was busily employing the cell method to create a following across the nation. They deliberately misled their readers by using the communist term cell instead of the actual term chapter, which is what the society calls a group of local members. People's World even attacked Mr. Welch's critical view of democracy. However, they forgot to mention that he also maintained that our founding fathers gave us a republic, not a democracy. We do, after all, pledge allegiance to the flag and to the republic for which it stands. Unfortunately, these false accusations would only be the first of many. A short time after the article appeared in the Communist newspaper, Time magazine issued its own article entitled The Americanist. It too gave the same destructive misinformation as People's World. Coincidence? Not likely. So what was the purpose of all this? The purpose was twofold. First, they wanted to stop more from joining the fight. Then they wanted to discredit and destroy Mr. Welch and the John Birch Society. So do you know what Mr. Welch decided to do? Yeah, he confronted those false accusations with nothing more than the truth. In order to do so, he sent a telegram to California's governor requesting an investigation by the California Senate Fact-Finding Subcommittee on Un-American Activities. Once the request was accepted, the subcommittee set out immediately to conduct the investigation. For two full years, the subcommittee poured over everything it was either given or could discover about the society. Investigators were sent to interview both JBS supporters and its critics. Agents attended chapter meetings, sometimes even secretly posing as people interested in membership. Finally, the subcommittee issued its report in 1963. It stated, We believe that the reason the John Birch Society has attracted so many members is that it simply appeared to them to be the most effective, indeed the only organization through which they could join a national movement to learn the truth about the communist menace and then take some positive concerted action to prevent its spread. Our investigation and study was requested by the society, which had been publicly charged with being a secret, fascist, subversive, un-American, anti-Semitic organization. We have not found any of these accusations to be supported by the evidence. The California report revealed how completely false the media's accusations aimed at the society really were. But do you think that stopped the attacks? Absolutely not. Instead, the attacks only increased. After that report was released, New York Governor Nelson Rockefeller responded with some insulting comments, referring to members of the society as extremists. This wasn't Rockefeller's only attack. During the 1964 Republican National Convention, and with a large national TV audience watching, Nelson Rockefeller delivered a speech about extremism and stated, It is essential that this convention repudiate here and now any doctrine any doctrinaire militant minority whether communist, Ku Klux Klan, or Bircher.
Connecting a good name, like the John Birch Society, with negative groups is a common smear tactic. Because of this and all the other attacks, uninformed people began to believe what they were hearing. What most Americans didn't realize was that the attacks on the society were being done out of fear. That's right, the fear that Mr. Welch's new organization would grow large enough to actually stop and then reverse the socialist and communist plans. During the 1958 founding meeting of the John Birch Society, Mr. Welch discussed one of the communist plans which involved the loss of our sovereignty to the United Nations. He then went on to list 10 communist goals for the United States. He restated these warnings in a speech in 1974. A part of that plan, of course, is to induce the gradual surrender of American sovereignty piece by piece and step by step to various international organizations of which the United Nations is the outstanding but far from the only example. Now, here are the aims for the United States. One, greatly expanded government spending for every conceivable means of getting rid of ever larger sums of American money as wastefully as possible. Two, higher and then much higher taxes. Three, an increasingly unbalanced budget despite the higher taxes. Four, wild inflation of our currency. Five, government controls of prices, wages, and materials supposedly to combat inflation. Six, greatly increased socialistic controls over every operation of our economy and every activity of our daily lives. This is to be accompanied naturally and automatically by a correspondingly huge increase in the size of our bureaucracy and in both the cost and reach of our domestic government. Seven, far more centralization of power in Washington and the practical elimination of our state lines. There is a many faceted drive at work to have our state lines eventually mean no more within the nation than our county lines do now within the states. Eight, the steady advance of federal aid to and control over our educational system, leading to complete federalization of our public education. Nine, a constant hammering into the American consciousness of the horror of modern warfare, the beauties and the absolute necessity of peace, peace always on communist terms, of course. And ten, the consequent willingness of the American people to allow the steps of appeasement by our government, which amount to a piecemeal surrender of the rest of the free world and of the United States itself. When we look back over the years since that speech, we can see just how real these predictions have become. If more Americans would have listened and helped back then, these threats could have been stopped. Good thing for us, more and more people are waking up and realizing the importance of what the founders gave us. We too can continue what Robert Welch started. From the beginning, Robert Welch knew that in order to restore and preserve our freedoms under the Constitution, he would need to expose and stop the socialists, communists, and other collectivists. He also knew that in order for America to remain free and independent, Patriots nationwide, we need to continue this fight for generations to come. So, is the John Birch Society an organization that strives to protect our freedoms under the U.S. Constitution? True. True! That's right, because it has withstood the test of time. For many decades, the John Birch Society has been dedicated to restoring and preserving our freedoms. With strong leadership, its members work at local, state, and federal levels to educate others on the proper role of government. The John Birch Society stands tall in protecting American independence and freedoms for all future generations. We hope that we've cleared the air on what many believe to be true about the John Birch Society. We also hope that you would consider joining us in our efforts. We need your help now more than ever because together, we can make a difference.